Hey there Seahawks, it's Ms. Adams, and in this video we're going to learn about randomness, probability, and simulation. Alright, so probability is a number between 0 and 1 that describes the proportion of times the outcome of a chance process would occur in a very large number of repetitions. The law of large numbers says that if we observe more and more repetitions of any chance process, that or the proportion of times that a specific outcome occurs approaches its probability. A simulation is when we imitate a chance process in a way that accurately models real world outcomes. How to perform a simulation. You want to describe how to use the chance process to perform one repetition of each simulation. So a chance process could be anything that's like a random chance, rolling a dice, spinning a spinner, drawing numbers out of a bag, things like that. You want to tell what, your, what you will record at the end of each repetition. You want to perform many repetitions. And then you want to use the results of your simulation to answer a question of interest. All right, an example of interpreting probability. According to the Book of Odds, the probability that a randomly selected U.S. adult believes the government staged or faked the Apollo moon landing in July 1969 is 0.06. Explain what the probability of 0.06 means in this setting. All right, so if you take a very large random sample of all U.S. adults, about 6% of them will be people who believe the government staged the Apollo moon landing. Um, if 100 U.S. adults are chosen at random, will exactly six of them believe the government staged or faked the Apollo moon landing? Explain your answer. All right, so probably not exactly six. Um, with only 100 randomly selected adults, the number who believe the government staged the Apollo moon landing may not be that close to six due to sampling variability. So there's going to be some variation when you're taking a sample. You're not always going to get six for every 100. But if you took many, 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 um, a lot more than 100, it would end up averaging out to be about 6%. All right, avoiding myths about randomness. A player is playing the game of craps and needs to roll a sum of eight on two fair die to win the game. The player then rolls a sum of 6, 7, 10, 10, and 6 on the next five consecutive rolls. A spectator yells, you're due for a win. Explain why the spectator is wrong. All right, so the spectator's claim is based on misapplying the law of large numbers to a small number of repetitions. The player is just as likely to roll a sum of 8 on this roll as she was on any previous roll. Okay, so here's kind of what this looks like when you're working with dice. If I'm looking for a sum, that means I have two dice. I'm going to add them together. Each die has the options one through six. And so in order to make eight, I could have six and two, five and three, four and four, three and five, or two and six. So there's five possible outcomes out of six times six is 36 total outcomes, which is about 13.9%. All right, using simulations to estimate probabilities. A local charity is running a casino night fundraiser. In one game called Roll Them All, the player repeatedly rolls a die until all six integers, one through six, have been rolled. If the player can roll them all, each of the six integers, in ten or fewer rolls, the player wins a prize. Mrs. Matos played the game and took, and took 18 rolls to roll them all. She thought that seemed like a surprisingly high number of rolls and wondered if the die was unfair or unbalanced. Describe how to use a random number generator to perform one repetition of a simulation. All right, so we're going to say let 1 equal rolling a 1, let 2 equal rolling a 2, all the way to 6 equal rolling a 6. Then we're going to generate a random integer from 1 to 6 to simulate rolling a die one time. We're going to keep generating random integers until all six integers, one through six, appear. We're going to record the number of rolls it takes to get all six integers. 
Okay, so we could use a random number generator in our calculator and we could set the conditions one through six. And so maybe we get one and then we get one again. So that means it took two rolls to just get one. Uh, and then we get five. So we have, we've rolled a one and a five so far, but it took us three rolls. All right, and so you would keep going until you've gotten all six of the numbers to appear and you would count how many total times you had to generate a number or how many rolls you had to do. All right, 50 repetitions of the simulation were carried out assuming the die was fair. That is, the simulation was set up so that all the integers one through six had an equal chance to show up on each simulated roll. The dot plot shows the simulated number of rolls required to roll them all. All right, so we did this many, many times. And this is what we got. This simulation is this dot plot. All right, so three times it only took seven rolls. Three times it took eight rolls. One of the times it took 29 rolls to get all six of the numbers. Explain what the dot at 21 represents. So there's 21. So it is one repetition where it took 21 rolls to get all six integers. Um, use the results of the simulation to estimate the probability that it will take 18 or more rolls to roll them all. So 18 or more would be all of these dots from 18 and above. So if I count them, I have 6 out of 50 total dots there. So it's about 12%. So there, there's about a 12% chance it would take 18 or more rolls to get all 6 integers. All right, based on the actual result of 18 rolls and your answer to part C, is there convincing evidence that the die that Ms. Matos used was unfair? So 12% is actually quite a bit, statistically speaking. If something occurs less than 5% of the time, then we'd say it's statistically significant. But because it is somewhat likely at 12%, that it would take 18 or more rolls to get all six integers by chance if all six outcomes are equally likely to appear on each roll. Um, this result does not provide convincing evidence that the die Ms. Matos used was unfair. All right. All right, go Seahawks.